Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. As today, we, uh, we tie up some loose ends, then forge a path deeper into the Underdark. Though first we, I guess, forge a plus one butter knife or something. I'm, I'm sure this seven step process is going to result in a weapon that we'll never actually use. But I'll be uh, happy if they prove me wrong. Let's see. Time to get this thing fired up. Sure, sure. I'll bellow with enthusiasm. Now for a great sword, dagger or sickle. Uh, now what? Instructions unclear. The roaring furnace awaits an offering. Oh! A candy sweet scent wafts forth. The Sousa bark infuses the weapon from within the flames. The flames sputter away. The dagger is yours for the taking. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably how it works. My zero point investment in blacksmithing finally paying off. Truly, we are a master of the craft. Susser dagger. A uh, plus one dagger that silences targets on hit. Smoke like whorls of susser sap darken the metal of this dagger's blade and silence its victims. Okay, you know what? That is actually potentially useful. For now, we'll toss it to Karlak so that she in turn might toss it at others. Though I will actually have to double check that to um, see if it functions properly when thrown. You'd think it would, but you never know with this game. Anyway, back into the pit we go. Right. But before we set our sights on distant shores, there is one other thing I wanted to investigate. Time to press ahead. Because, um... As I was perusing our surroundings last time around, I noticed this right here. A random clump of harvestable resources in a most peculiar position. Given the way this game so often works, I have to imagine that's a deliberate clue. Ooh, uh, what? Hey, bud. I assume the locals collected you to compost your body or something? That, that does seem about right in keeping with local customs. Honestly, admirably practical. And yet, for some reason, when I do things like that, I always get in trouble. Go figure. Anyway, let's, uh, let's see what's going on up here. Oh, I see. Huh. Not gonna lie, I, that is not at all what I was expecting. Not down here. Though, to be fair, I, I suppose caves do often have rocks in them. Clever Cuckoo. Karlak is inspired. Steal from the giant bird's nest in the Underdark. <laughs> I've got to say, Karlak, I love you, but you get excited about the weirdest things. It's funny, you know, I, I often... I often poke at the classic alignment system because, you know, alignments, morality, it all tends to be very relative. So initially, I really liked the idea that the inspiration system was replacing it in 5th edition. But then you see stuff like that. Though, I mean, sure, it's a video game, whatever. It, it's fine. <laughs> I suppose ultimately I shouldn't really expect an in-depth exploration of an abstract concept in something as inherently limited as a CRPG. 
They're really just skimming the surface while I'm sitting here expecting them to plunge us into the deep end. Speaking of which... A vessel wobbles on the lake's murky waters. And into the darkness we go. What could possibly go wrong? That is a cool looking boat. That's a uh, catamaran. Just a really neat design. Pirates from the sun beneath the sea. You, what are you doing on Gex Raft? Where's Gek? Who are you? Gek, Gek. Oh, you must mean that corpse I found just outside that uh, incredibly dangerous Mykonid colony. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't go there. That that guy's super dead. The sergeant will be pissed about her boots. Come on, let's get you to shore. You're the one telling the sergeant what happened. The rest of you, keep patrolling. I'll be heading back with this one. You continue forward in silence until the lights of a camp twinkle through the murk. Sideways. We've got a welcoming party. You shithead! Time you showed up! We got trouble! Spit it out! Sergeant finally choked on true soul near's prick! Drugno! The twat soul caused a rockfall! Trapped tighter than a ring on a fat finger. You're shitting me. You pay up? That's the trouble. He's got the gold on him. Sergeant's arm is falling off with all the gnome slaves she's been beating. Who's the whom, Greyman? Another slave for the dig. Hi. I hate, like, 90% of what you just said. I don't know what a hoon is. I'm gonna guess, based on context, that it's something terrible. I'm also going to assume you do not have a high opinion of true souls. So you guys are slavers, are you? Deep gnomes, mostly. Easy to feed. Fat thumbs for digging. That's a problem for you. I mean, yeah, kind of, but uh, I'd really rather poke around a bit before I just kill you all. So, you know, I'm mostly just here for your sergeant first. Maybe you could uh, point me in their direction. Aye. He sniffed up Gek's corpse. Found the hoon sailing his skiff. That's so. I... 
You feel the slightest of stirrings in your head. The Dwegar is not infected, yet your minds resonate. Oh, I'll be. You're one of them cult freaks. Felt the tingle. Your twat soul chum owes us a load of coin. You want through? Make a donation. Oh gosh, I have to pay you to get through. What? Whatever am I, a humble 300 pound dragon man brimming with eldritch energies to do? Tell me, what uh, what's the local exchange rate on raw, unadulterated violence? Unclog your hole. Just shitting around. But I'm warning you, that twat soul ain't settled up soon. There'll be hell to pay for the lot of you cult buggers. Might be worth talking to some of the gnome slaves. Before they're worked to death, that is. Yeah, we're, we're gonna kill these guys. I think that's pretty much a given, but again... Investigate first. Wholesale slaughter second. Also, uh, just for the record, um, as far as unclogging holes goes, I have it on good authority. I apparently may not have those. I don't know. It's just awkward all around. I mean, hey, I, I tried to do some research online, but, uh, you know, that, uh... I say you're scamming a lot of us. Oh, hey, uh, pile of corpses. Uh, darn. I guess I have to stop talking about whatever I was just talking about. Back to business, right? What are you looking at? Move! Go on. Okie dokie. Grubby map and battered note. Plus some interesting scenery. All owned, so proceed with caution. Grubby map. A crudely drawn map marred by annotations and personal notes. On one side of this page, a hand-drawn map depicts a northern grotto, bordering the Ebon Lake. An attacker's account marks the other. One of the drooning shrooms sensed us and split. Chunky one, too. Months worth of soup, at least. The rest were too busy droning to put up a fuss. Near pays us, and I'm bolting for Mantol Dareth. Thrin's orders be damned. They got eel steak, mineral mead, and topland food of all sort. Clan can't live on fungus alone. Ooh, okay, so that's about the slaughter of Glut Circle. But also mention of eel steaks, so that's as good a reason as we'll ever get to finally read Jake's Encyclopedia of Eels. Loosely bound, uneven pages hang out of this book. The script is uneven and seems to be written in whatever color ink the author had to hand at the time. Forward. No one wants to read about eels, eh? You stuck-up candle-keep gits can keep your books on magic and demons and celestial bodies. People are practical folk, and they want to read practical things. Can't make a pie out of stars, can you? No. Eels is important. Dude, stargazy pie. Right. Let's get one thing straight. Giant lightning eels? Not technically eels. They look like them, sure, and everyone calls them eels, but the shape of the head, the bone structure... You can't tell me that's the same as a giant moray. I mean, I wouldn't be so judgy. It's not about the size or shape. It's it's about a moray. Now where can you catch eels? Bloody everywhere. From Neverwinter to El Terrell to Calimport. You can find an eel. But where do they breed and how? Well, you probably heard the stories that they're just snakes that learn to swim. Or they're baby leviathans, or they're underdark spies, but that's all bunkum. They breed in the Sea of Moonshay, I'm sure, and then swim all over Faerun. And if those pricks in Candlekeep give me the money to sail there, I'd be able to prove it. But no, they're too busy studying demon puzzle boxes and mumbling about whatever Alondo said years ago. But Al couldn't tie a good fishing knot for nothing. The book carries on like this for several pages before finally returning to the topic of eels. You know, 
normally when I read one of these lore books, I, I, I at least get a general gist of why... why they exist. <laughs> I, uh, I am honestly not sure what to make of this one. Aside from maybe that little bit about Underdark Spies, or... Or the vague reference to giant electric eels. Huh. Alright, well, I'm sure that'll make sense in retrospect someday. Battered note. The crisp note is poked through in several places, apparently subject to the writer's ire. Hey, prickheads. Slave grub in the right barrel, rock chow in the left. Next to you shits, I see flubbing it is getting a hot poker up the arse sideways. Thren. I... I kind of hate this place. I mean, like, honestly, these guys are almost kind of making the goblins feel tame. Because at least they... had some very meager redeeming qualities. And some of them were kind of cute, but that's neither here nor there. So I guess these must be the barrels they were talking about. Roth Chow on the left. Gnome food on the right. I'm assuming there's some reason they specified that. At least for us, I mean. Like, from a metagame standpoint. Executed Drow. Interesting. Perhaps we can spike the... The gnome food with something to help fortify them. Just a theory. A dumb theory. Half these walls are still standing. Hey, Roth. Rothe? IRA Roth? A herd of rogue IRA Roth approach. Roll credit check. Okay, so obviously this place is an old Charon temple long abandoned. The expert. Why don't you tell me? And based on the chatter over here, the Dwergar came in after the fact and are still trying to puzzle out exactly what this place was. Fancier tents, that's gotta be where the sergeant is. I've got a long road ahead. So we will focus on the lower areas first. Gather intel and resources, undermine their operation. Chatty corpse. Don't like strangers here, but Absolute must have took you in. You are absolutely correct. So what's with all the, uh, dead drow? Me? Who else? My spiders sussed them out of hiding, then near taught them a thing or two, and I let them fly. Cool, cool. So, who were they? What, what, what were they up to? Where'd they come from? Caught them sniffing around. Easy marks. Had the stench of the toplands. Hung them here as a warning. Ain't no one drugs with clan flame shade. Surface drow. Weird. Okay. I mean, followers of the Absolute would have reason to be on the surface. The Absolute protects them from the sun, but... Ooh. Hey, cuties. I guess that must be Mermath's brood... Elder Brithvar. Oh, that must be our sergeant right there. We also have conspicuous containers, all owned, of course, which makes it obnoxious to try to loot them. Dead drow, publicly displayed. The Duergar are sending a message. Doing? Donald, Jordan. The culprits are spreading like flies on shit. See where the gnome sapper went? Thrain ain't found a trace. Found a way past the rockfall is my guess. 
Scourge will still at it then. Prick ain't stopped caning those beasts last I saw, and he still ain't broke through. This place is hard to bear. The gnome bolted. I saw it myself. Friends still ain't caught a whiff of her. Oh my goodness, guys. Slaves are paying the price. I know what you those mean. Will get Everyone is so unhappy. Ah. Well, I meant more than molten rock and plunging chasms, but yes, the folk leave something to be desired as well. Present company excluded, of course. Oh, hush you. Stop fishing for compliments. Guys, that's super adorable. I'm trying to eavesdrop. Three ain't found a trace. But, um, I think the general gist is that uh, we have a gnome escapee around here somewhere. You need me to wipe your ass while I'm at it. Plus, these guys. Let's see what their deal is. That's a friendly looking shadow. Those pricks will get nowhere with what an odd emblem. Don't think I've seen it before. Can't slow down. Oh, hi there. Reinforcements, huh? Let's see how long you last. Got a bit longer than you. A theft has been reported. And oh, it seems gosh darn it. Come on. Suspect. Choose your next Who rifled wisely. through the pockets of this corpse in a cage? Was it you? Tell me at once. And screw you. I don't know what you're talking about. I was just standing on these stairs minding my own business when you came up and started randomly accusing me of things. Are you saying someone has robbed this person you killed? And of course it would be with Lazel. You may have talked your way out of this one, but there will be no repeat performance. Yeah, fine. Next time I'll kill them all. A theft has been reported, and it seems really? you're okay. the only well, suspect. Well, I guess... Choose your next step wisely. I still don't know what you're talking about. Didn't you already catch someone? free for now but your stories won't land so well if you're caught again yeah yeah you're just super lucky that my love of lore and investigation has very briefly outweighed my desire to just slaughter you guys and be done with it my goodness that system is garbage engraved pen a small but detailed pen depicting a harp offset against a crescent moon. Harp is obvious, that's the Harpers. Crescent moon would be Solune. We have found prior evidence the two are working together. Creased letter. Scouting orders found on a drow's caged corpse. Jam. Like a phoenix from the ashes, Scrimforge has risen from the dead. I've word of a drow cultist gathering Dwergar in the old city's halls. That the Absolute means to recruit them, I've no doubt. Yet it's what they might seek amidst the ruins that most troubles me. You've not failed me yet. Go to Grimforge, cling to Shadow, and bring word of the cult's intentions to last light. I will be waiting. J. Hmm, interesting. I think that's the first reference we've had to the Harpers directly investigating the Absolute. The previous indications were they were looking into Shar and the cult of Salune. Though, I mean, ultimately it does seem like everyone's more or less looking for the same thing. I'm guessing the Night Song? Moving in. I mean, that would track. That's, uh... That's hidden beneath Moonrise Tower. Moonrise Tower is currently held by the Cult of the Absolute. Though it turns out we have someone right here that we can actually ask about it. Let's jam. 
The corpse regards you lifelessly. I'm afraid you've passed on, my friend. Who were you in life? Zahan Harper Scout. Zahm. Not how I would have pronounced it. Interesting. Well, tell me, Zahm, what were you trying to accomplish out here? Cultists. Threat to Baldur's Gate. Jahira's orders. Jahira? Can't say I know the name. But I certainly do. Okay, so that's how they're working in Jahira. Interesting. So what went wrong? God, interrogate my mind. Right, I suppose I can see how that might be an issue. Where were you based out of? Last light, a safe haven in shadows. And I don't suppose you have any caches or resources I should be made aware of? The spell's power wanes. You can ask no more questions. So we've got definite recent Harper involvement. Good thing you got me. You which I suppose does make sense given the rapidly growing nature of this particular threat. Ah, what tangled webs we weave. I speak true, brothers. You know it in your hearts. You know it in your very souls. We need no Lolf, no Spider Queen. Father Murmuth is the head of Clan Lur. He hatched us, raised us, feeds us. What care we for his business here? He keeps us small, keeps us contained. We should be with the Spider Queen, revered, adored. You've read that harming spiders is illegal among Loth's faithful and often punishable by death. Father Mermoth is our past. Lolf is our future. These spiders are loyal to the local Dwekar. In the event of a fight, they will join the fray against you with slavering enthusiasm. Hey, you guys talking about Mermoth? Yeah, I just met that guy. He seems pretty cool. Though, man, he would... He would not shut up about how much he hated his stupid, useless spiders. Wait. Oh, shoot, is that... Never mind, you know what? Forget forget I said anything. Sorry. Useless? Hideous. Xanta, is it so? You see? Father Mermot's time has passed. Come, brothers. Follow me into Lolf's hairy embrace. Her embrace? We're ready. We follow. <laughs> yes. Now, brothers, our new dawn awaits. No one drugs with Clan Flameshade. I'm sure that's fine. And obviously, I'd also like to check these corpses, but we'll have to hold off on that until after we clear these guys out. As we've already seen, I just do not have the patience to deal with the uh, janky crime and punishment system. Which is a shame, because classically, I do love playing rogues. But Larian somehow managed to find a way to just not make it fun for me. Though, you know, in their defense, they are far from the only company to get you got a brain of your unrealistically own. overzealous with their anti-theft measures. Oop, nope, let's not have that. Hold on. Unless you're here to kick some stiffs lakeside, I suggest you bugger off. 
<laughs> My goodness, that's quite the pile of corpses you've built up there. Did you, uh, kill them all yourself? Nah. Rockfall smashed them. Can't have them stinking up the place. <laughs> the half that weren't crushed are digging the true soul out of the wreckage. Then what? You're just tossing them in the drink? Feels like a bit of a sunk cost. Are you at least checking their pockets? <laughs> you gotta be kidding. These trash don't have nothing on them but rocks. Rocks. Is that so? You spot a shiny trinket on one of the corpses. Yeah, you're probably right. Nothing here worth scavenging. Might as well just pool their resources. Tell you what, why don't you uh, let me finish this up for you? I'm sure you guys have better things to do. Thank the Absolute. They're all yours. Absolute. Happy to help. Eat and drink freely, for the lady doth come. Inappropriate. Fables of Faerun, Volume 6. The Cheerful Deep Gnome. Don't mind if I do. Deep in the Underdark lived Doyle, the plucky Deep Gnome slave. Day and night, he and his brother toiled for five Dwergar smiths, mining iron and mithril until their arms ached and their eyes burned. Faster, cried the Dwergar, and faster Doyle would dig, even into the night while his masters slept, smiling all the while. How can you smile while we slave? asked the brother. Because I wish our masters much success, was Doyle's reply. Words of the Dwergar's quality weapons and armor quickly spread. To meet demand, the Dwergar brought in more slaves and began to forge and stockpile their wares at the dig site. Yet Doyle dug harder than ever, his wide grin never faltering. Soon the Dwergar's operations grew so great that they commanded twenty deep known slaves. The day the twenty-first came, Doyle laughed and whooped so loud his Dwergar captors sought silence in a nearby grotto. The slavers returned to find Doyle and his fellow deep gnomes clad in robust mithril armor and carrying mighty iron weapons, all taken from the slavers' stockpile. The five Dwergar fell quickly, for they were no match for twenty-one armed deep gnomes. And Doyle? He never stopped smiling. Beneath the fable, an incensed reader has written a brief review. Garbage! This where the gnomes are getting bright ideas? Anyhow, I don't get it. The lesson makes no damn sense. Yeah, it probably doesn't mean anything. Don't worry about it, I'm sure it's fine. Just carry on as you have been, and uh, at a certain point, you just won't have to worry about it no more. Gnomes killed under the yoke of slavers. Really? Save your prayers for someone who at least had the spine to fight back. All right, easy now, Shadow. I was just starting to warm up to you. Fetish of Kalar Duran Smooth Hands. Grants invisibility, I assume, once per day. 
The smooth, six-pointed star on this ring is beset with small, underdark gemstones, as befits a talisman of the god of mining and patron of deep gnomes. Another trinket for our ever-growing arsenal. Keepsake gem. A small gemstone dulled by decades of handling by nervous fingers. A small rune has been scrupulously carved into its tip. Not marked as a quest item, but it does sound like something someone might like to get back. Delicious corpse starch. Obviously, we'll leave the bodies be for the time being. That way, the uh, the deep gnomes can collect their own. Once all is said and done, oh, uh, hi there. I'll take that. I don't want to get too sidetracked, but we should at least peek in these side rooms. Oh, rooms get it all spitty. Take a big swig. Cure you right up. Oh, yeah, that's not bad at all. Dead-end corridor with a couple of containers. We can deal with that. Ooh, though that... That looks promising. Let me just scoop this stuff up real quick. Then we'll hit the next room over. Find some stuff that's really worth dragging around. Secret door, okay. No real hints as to where this might take us, but yeah, yeah, let's give it a peek. Oh, okay, yeah, this looks fine. My big concern is that we'll accidentally wander too far, go too deep, and kick off the next story Wait, event or something, you know? end up skipping out on content that we could have otherwise explored and exploited. And obviously, while the Dwergar are not long for this world, we are going to be killing them pretty much, regardless of how things play out. I would like to finish mining them for intel. Smoke powder. Interesting. This this almost has the feel of a more recent stash. I can't imagine how that that smoke powder would have survived in such a moist area otherwise. My immediate suspicion is that if we were to go through that collapsed archway there, it'll lead us to wherever our our deep gnome escapees are hiding out. Perhaps lying in wait trying to put together some sort of plan to rescue their brethren. Let's check that kitchen real quick. Perhaps see if we can find the other end of that collapsed archway. Some sort of preserved larder or pantry would be a logical place for escapees to hide. Can't afford to stay idle. Let's see what my touch can do. Let's get going. Oh, 
gemstone bowl. Yes, please. And another. Oh, man. Oh, the scraps of a nightfall feast. To break bread in Shah's name, then spill blood in her name. A sacred rite. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely a there Temple of Shar. Shar enough. I really should give her that noble stock. Looking ahead. I'm just holding off. I'm still undecided on that whole Dareth and Balin thing. It's just such an unpleasant story. I don't like contemplating on it. Though, you know, to be fair, I suppose there's no real shortage of grim dark elements in, in any epic fantasy campaign. Baldur's Gate 3 included. I mean, case in point, we've got these Dwergar slavers with their their deep gnome victims. It's just in cases like this, it's much easier to approach it with your classic murder hobo mentality. The Dwergar are essentially two-dimensional villains, at least from what we've seen thus far. They are just borderline monsters to be slain. Though, who knows, perhaps they'll gain more depth as we delve deeper into their den. At the very least, we should try meeting up with their sergeant before doing anything we might otherwise regret. My goodness, they, uh, they really went all out with the treasure in this room. This might be one of the single most valuable stashes we've found thus far. Kind of bonkers considering it's just kitchenware. That is an obvious secret door. They didn't even try with that one. That's curious. Swift as my feet can carry me. Hmm. What's that? You know, adventuring has its ups and downs. We've we've certainly been through some stuff. But it always pays to focus on the silver lining. Might not make it all worth it, not at 20 gold a pop, but it certainly helps. Get a peek behind door number two. Interesting, interesting. Seeing an awful lot of cobwebs all of a sudden. I don't need any. He thinks there might right be now. some giant spiders in our future. Oh, what is that? Acid? So maybe not spiders, maybe oozes or gelatinous cubes, green slime. Definitely feels like we're walking into something. Curious. That stone there's been pried loose. What do we have here? 
Bold of you to notice. Bolder still to investigate. Ooh, interesting, interesting. So yeah, that definitely feels like another utility stash. You don't say. Yes, yes, I too noticed the constant flow of caustic acid from the ceiling. Or were you perhaps referring to something else? All right, folks, you know what? Um, we are just past time, so I feel like this is a good place to call it. I am getting a mite bit jumpy now that we're starting to get off the beaten path. I'll have to think on whether I want to push further out this way or finish mucking with the... Uh, the Dwergar first. That said, we'll uh, hit the pause button for now. I'll take care of the usual off-screen bookkeeping, get our inventory straightened up, and we'll pick up here next time. I will admit, this is not at all what I envisioned this area looking like, but uh, it's, it's intriguing. I'm very eager to explore more. See you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible, including but not limited to Revenant, Aloise, Croaking LOR, Dragon Matrix 7, Dracket, Theory V23, Egon Alter, Excelsior, Goatleaf, James Tremay, Kazorm, Mark Giems, and Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description. Oh, hush you. Stop fishing for compliments.